Welcome to Common Heart. I'm so glad that you're here today for worship. And I'm also so glad that Jesus sees us and loves us. Jesus sees you and loves you. Let us come and see together what Jesus is up to as we worship God today.
I need a fresh word from the Gospels this week. Frankly, we all do. In John chapter 1, Jesus is on the move. And Jesus is out searching for people who would be willing to follow him. Hear now this word from John chapter 1, verses 43 through 50. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. See this narrative today. It tells us about the decisions of Philip and Nathaniel to follow Jesus. And it's interesting to note because even from the beginning, following Jesus was met with some reluctance. Nathaniel, obviously in this story, he had reluctance to follow Jesus. Philip, I mean, he was straight up from the get-go. Let's do this. I'm ready. Let's go. Let me go get Nathaniel and tell him to come too. But Nathaniel, when Philip comes to him, he responds, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? He had some, some trepidation, so to speak, about how following Jesus might indeed bless his life. He was skeptical about Jesus' background and about Jesus' story, and that's okay. It is okay to be skeptical. But it's also intriguing to me how Philip responds to Nathaniel's skepticism. He simply says three words, come and see, come and see. And such is the tag for this message today. You see, I hope that our skepticism and our reluctance is able to come face to face with what a healthy relationship with Jesus can truly be, what it can do for our lives, what it can do for our days, what it can do for this world we live in, our relationships and our communities. That's my hope for you and for me, to have a healthy relationship with Jesus that informs all of our living and all of our doing. I believe that's what, that's what Jesus desires with us. I believe Jesus, just like Jesus was out on the move in John chapter 1, I believe Jesus is still on the move today searching for people who would be willing to follow even in the midst of skepticism and reluctance. Did you hear how Jesus interacted with Nathaniel? I mean, Jesus looked at him and, and Jesus saw him. It, the text says that Jesus saw Nathaniel under the fruit of a fig tree. Jesus wants that, that good and, and ripe fruit in our lives. But the thing is, Jesus never invites us to come and see without first seeing us. Jesus never invites us to come and see without first seeing us. Jesus sees our skepticism. Jesus sees our reluctance. Jesus sees our hearts and our lives. Jesus knows our story and looks directly our way. And with grace, Jesus says, come and see what I can do for your days and your living. Come and see. 
This is not a demand, but it is an invitation from someone who loves us and sees us and desires to be in relationship with us. But the gravity and the beauty of this relationship, it's only fully realized when we accept the freedom and the invitation to act on it. There's something in this story today from from John 1 and Jesus' invitation that cannot be fully described with words. I could, I could sit here all day and talk about Jesus, but it won't really make a difference if, if you and me are not willing to come and see what Jesus is truly up to in this world and in our lives. It won't make a difference if you and I have already judged Nazareth if we've already made the decision that, that nothing good can come from a place that we don't even really know. But something holy, something holy must have happened not written in these pages when Nathaniel looked Jesus in the eyes. What a sacred thing that is to have an encounter with Jesus. These words today, they, they say what Nathaniel did, but they do not say what Nathaniel felt. I have this, this firm conviction that, that Nathaniel was, was invited into a healthy relationship with Jesus, and it truly filled him up with something that words cannot describe. It truly changed his life that day. Perhaps that's why Nathaniel was, was moved so quickly to respond. Something holy, something set apart seems to have stirred up some strong emotions in Nathaniel's spirit on that day long ago. So much so, so much so that Nathaniel was convinced to move from skepticism to confession. This is an important movement from skepticism to confession from not knowing who Jesus truly is to confessing Him as the anointed Son of God, Savior of the world and King of Israel. Nathaniel moved quick. He moved quick, y'all. But you see, these words today, they also remind me to make sure that, that I don't make Nathaniel's quick movement as prescriptive for our own. Sometimes, sometimes in fact, the work of responding to Jesus does not work with such a haste manner. Sometimes it is a tall task and it does not come so swiftly. Sometimes the work of following Jesus has in fact been unhealthy for us and for those around us. Sometimes the work of come and see, it's hard and it's slow. And some of us, some of us know this all too well. For while Jesus comes for the individual and the corporate, I have found that sometimes, sometimes if we're not careful, the corporate proclamation of Jesus is harmful to faith movements for the individual. Sometimes the corporate proclamation of Jesus is harmful for faith movements of the individual. I must say today very clearly that the work of the church is not immune to self-inspection or self-care. For some of us have been hurt when leaders of the church proclaim Jesus because it is far too often nothing like the Jesus who we read about in the scriptures. It is far too often nothing like the Jesus who I just read about from John chapter 1. In this story today, Philip pointed Nathanael directly to Jesus. Nowhere else. He pointed Nathanael to Jesus. And far too often, 
Our own leaders will point directly to the church or to other authorities in this world. Failing to acknowledge that Jesus is the one who should always be leading the church and all the people. I realize. I realize that some are skeptical when they see the hypocrisy of people who would make an admirer of Jesus, but an idol out of presidents. I, I realize that some people are reluctant because their hopes for human flourishing and mutuality are met with edicts of condemnation and the pleading for them to fall in line. I fear that the come and see narrative too often promoted is judgment over Jesus, oligarchy over beloved community, and homogeneity over diversity. Judgment over Jesus, oligarchy over beloved community, and homogeneity over diversity. These things I am naming today. These things I am naming are unhealthy for the church. They are unhealthy for individuals. They are unhealthy for me and for you in our lives. And I must tell you today, this is not what Jesus is inviting us to. This is not what Jesus is inviting us to. When we do these things and we perpetuate this wrongdoing, it stands as disservice to the gospel of Jesus Christ. It stands as disservice to a gospel that invites us to come and see. It stands as divisive to people and incitement to hate. I'm afraid that that in the church we have far too often turned gracious invitations into weighty commands. And then, and then, get this, and then we get surprised or defensive when people are skeptical and reluctant to follow. We get surprised and defensive when people are skeptical or reluctant to follow. This has to change. This does not need to be the way. Hear me today. As the Gospel of John attests, the church should never be pointing to itself or to human masters. The church should always and evermore point directly to Jesus the author and perfecter of our faith. This is what the text of John 1 says we are invited to follow. Jesus. The text invites us to come and see Jesus. The one whom Nathaniel looked face to face and felt a turning of his life. Jesus. The one who invites you and me into blessed relationship and beloved community. Jesus, the one who sees the church and is asking for us to follow him, not buildings or slogans or pastors. Pastors should point to Jesus. I should point to Jesus. Jesus, bridge builder, Border crosser, empire toppler, mighty to save. Jesus, redeemer, peace bringer, priority rearranger, life giver, hope supplier, community constructor, healer of the nations. Jesus, the one who knows us by our name and sees exactly where we stand. Jesus, the one who identifies with the fruit of our fig tree. Jesus, 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 the one who bids us to follow, follow the way to greater things and a greater world today and for our children and for our children's children. 
This is the Jesus we are invited to come and see today face to face. Not Jesus who is the Republican. Not Jesus who is the Democrat. But Jesus who is the Christ. The anointed one of God. Jesus is Lord. And no one else is. This, this is the Jesus. This is the Jesus. Hear me today. This is the Jesus who is prompting a movement. However hard and slow it may be for all of us to follow. This is the Jesus bringing reckoning and reconciliation to our lives, to our nation, and to this world. So listen closely today. Listen closely. Pay attention. Because Jesus sees you. And Jesus sees us. And Jesus is clearly calling us by name to come and see. Amen.
Hey everyone, I wanted to spend some time together today in reflection about the message we heard this week and in some meditation together. Um, in the reading from John that Josh read for us, Jesus sees Nathaniel. He recognizes his face. He calls him by name. It's a gracious invitation into relationship. So I wanted to think together about relationships today. There are several kinds of relationships that we as humans have and need in our life together. We first need a healthy relationship with ourselves, where we can really look into our inner landscape and see the beauty, the worthiness, the image of God in ourself. And while holding that, we can look and we can see and examine the faults and the sin, the things that keep us apart from a healthy relationship with ourself and with others and with God. Then there are relationships with people we share life with. These are people we can be totally, completely ourselves with. We can be honest and open and vulnerable. Uh, these are the thing. These are the people that sometimes know what's wrong with us or that there's something wrong with us before we even know. These are people like our partners, our best friends, our siblings, our family members. There are then people that are just sort of on the periphery of our lives that are in our lives, but maybe not sharing our life with us on a regular basis. Could be coworkers, uh, someone you see at the store. And then hopefully we also have community relationships, corporate relationships, where we have a feeling of belonging with people through shared experiences and values. And so I think it's important to note that Jesus' invitation is one into all of these kinds and types of relationships with ourselves, with other people, and with community. And I see it sort of as Josh called Jesus in his message, Jesus as bridge builder here. Jesus is building these bridges of relationship along with us for our health and for our flourishing and for the flourishing of all people. But there's something that threatens to damage these bridges where Jesus sees us and calls us by name. There is a destructive force that threatens these relationship bridges. You can call it dehumanization. Dehumanization will damage these bridges we've built with Jesus. Another term for it could be name calling, which is truly ironic because it could not be further from the kind of calling by name that Jesus exemplified. When we think of another, the other, as something less or somehow less human than us, relationships are threatened. And when these bridges are so damaged that they collapse or they go up in flames, we cannot even see those on the other side of that bridge clearly for all the smoke and ash blinding us to the truth of their humanity. So I invite us today to come and see where Jesus can help us repair these bridges. We'll do this together through a practice of loving kindness meditation. So you see, I'm here on my couch. I wanted us to be comfortable wherever you are in your home or wherever you're watching this or listening to this from. Find somewhere that allows you to have your chest and heart open and brave. Maybe roll your shoulders back, relax your neck and unclench your jaw and set an intention for this meditation to allow yourself to be available to whatever comes up 
whatever movement is initiated through these quiet moments of reflection. And just begin by noticing your breath. Noticing, not changing. Is it shallow? Is it deep? Is it fast or slow? And just notice it for a couple of moments here. You can close your eyes or simply let your gaze fall to the floor in front of you. Now, letting your breath expand. Allow the air in your lungs to fill the space in your chest, causing even more opening. And take some deep breaths together. Now think of yourself right where you are. Imagine that you're seeing yourself from, from outside yourself. You're looking at yourself lovingly, tenderly. If it helps, imagine the way Jesus sees you. No judgment, just love. Now we're going to speak some words to ourselves. So you'll repeat the phrases after I say them. May you be well. May you be at peace. May you be loved. Take a few more deep breaths. And now imagine there's someone in front of you that you love deeply. You have no problem being open and vulnerable with this person. The bridge of relationship is open and healthy. See this person in front of you and speak these words of loving kindness to them. May you be well. May you be at peace. May you be loved. Expansive breaths. Increase your capacity for love with each inhale. Allow any judgment to melt with every exhale. And now imagine someone in front of you you may not know as well. You may know their name, you may not. Someone you're not sharing life with but is in your life. Could be a coworker, someone who works at a restaurant or a store, a community helper. And let's say these same words to this person. May you be well. May you be at peace. May you be loved. And now with your heart open and full of the non-judgmental love of Jesus, try to imagine someone with who you have trouble seeing the humanity all the time. You maybe become used to dehumanizing them in your mind. Someone in your life, uh, someone you know, you know in your heart that they're not a bad person. You may have just had a disagreement with them or disagree with them on politics or religion, any number of things. Someone you've had a relationship with and that, that bridge has been damaged. Not someone that has caused you trauma, but someone with whom you just need some repair with. And let's say these same words to this person. May you be well. May you be at peace.
May you be loved. Now turning your gaze inward, acknowledge whatever emotion or movement has been initiated through this practice. Again, not trying to change it or manage a feeling, but just feeling. Breathing through each wave of emotion as it comes and goes. And stay here for as long as you want, breathing and noticing. A few more deep, expansive breaths. May you be well. May you be at peace. May you be loved. Something holy happens when we encounter Jesus. For this grace is always inviting, welcoming us to new heights of love and life. Let us respond to Jesus this day with dreams of beloved community, hopeful action for a greater world, and inspired faith in Jesus as Lord, the one we are to follow. Amen. Amen.